Zeiss adaptive sun lenses are a game changer, converting your sunglasses into an everyday pair you can wear all year round. In today's video, I'm going to be showcasing the four color options which I've been reviewing over the last six months. I'm going to be explaining the pros and cons of each one, and I'm going to be helping you understand how you can spec your own pair, as well as explaining how this amazing technology works. So hi, I'm Robert, style and vision consultant here at the Spectacle Factory, and it's my job to pair you with your perfect pair of glasses and or sunglasses and adaptive sun is really a hybrid technology that converts your sunglasses as I mentioned into something much more than that. These are tinted glasses you can think of that do everything that sunglasses do only better. So the concept with adaptive sun is that we start off with either a 60% solid or a 75% gradient tint. The first pair that I'm going to be showcasing are the color Grey. Now grey is the simplest colour option, mainly because it provides very natural and neutral colour perception. And for a lot of people that's what they love with sunglasses, they want to see the image truly but with the brightness reduced. That's essentially what a grey lens does. The disadvantage to grey is that it doesn't enhance your vision really in any way. It doesn't improve contrast in the way that some of the other colours do and it doesn't give you that relaxing sensation that the blue lenses do, for example. It also has quite a cold effect on the eyes, so it makes the eyes feel cooler behind a grey lens. And whilst I personally don't enjoy that here in the UK where we get enough cold weather already, if you live in a really warm and hot climate, a grey lens can be excellent because it provides that kind of relief, that soothing effect, especially when these lenses darken up to 97%. So I generally have found that the grey lens works for me best on holiday. Let's say you're out on the beach in really bright hot weather, you've got an awesome pair of sunglasses. But if you then need to go into a shop or a cafe, these lenses will then fade back to a very usable 75% gradient. I can easily see well indoors, even though the lenses might look dark to you. Now because grey is arguably the most kind of boring lens colour, I paired them with a frame that's anything but. My own creation where we combine the lens rim from one colorway with the black frame of another. And I think it looks really striking, particularly with the bright yellow lens rim, there was enough going on to not need to go for any more exciting colors. A simple flat gray is perfect here. So whilst I really have enjoyed wearing the gray lens on holiday, I have found that sometimes walking here in the UK they have been the least successful. One example was when I was hiking and got to a really elevated position. Now, because I was really high up, the UV levels were extreme. And of course, that activated the lenses, and made them darken. The problem was that the brightness didn't match. So the lenses had gone really dark, but it was actually quite a cloudy day. And I found that my visibility was reduced so much. As an example, let me show you just how dark these lenses will go when activated under a UV torch. Now, adaptive sun lenses are extremely fast to activate and to deactivate. Unlike most photochromic lenses that need to go from clear indoors to fully dark outdoors, these are only varying between around 60% to 90%. So the reaction speed is very quick in both directions. And there you can see on the right hand side just how dark this gray lens has gone. And yes, now my visibility in here is really reduced. Now, if I was outside and it was a really bright sunny day, that would actually be quite relaxing, quite relieving on my eyes. And that's why I say if you live in a hot climate, a warm climate with lots of bright weather, the grey lens might be the choice for you. But here in the UK, it's a colour that I don't quite recommend. And that leads us nicely on to the brown adaptive sun. Now, brown of the four colours that I've been reviewing extensively over the six months is quite simply the one that I would choose for me. And the reason why this is so good is the versatility. Now, adaptive sun lenses, of course, are all already versatile. Whichever color you choose, they're super versatile because they adjust to light. But some colors take that upper level. And no matter the weather, no matter the situation, I just find the brown lens to be perfect for me. And what I enjoy with brown is the contrast enhancement that you get with it. It's a warmer color, so it brings out certain colors like greens and reds. It does also dampen blues, and that's, I guess, one slight downside is that the sky will seem just that little bit less blue than it would with a gray lens. And unlike the gray, which has a very cold effect on the eyes, the brown has a lovely warming effect. And for me, I like warm weather, so this always makes me feel like I'm in a warmer environment. Now, both of these two pairs, unlike the other two that we're going to get to, have the same coating. These are finished with Durovision Sun treatment. Now, Durovision Sun, I would say, is kind of like the standard coating that you would get with these lenses. And it's extremely good. It's very scratch resistant, 
It's water resistant, it's oleophobic, which means resistant to oil and grease, and it's anti-static as well. These have an anti-reflective treatment on the back surface, but deliberately not an anti-reflective treatment on the front surface. That means that some light that hits the lens will be reflected away from the eyes, providing even more protection. But if you do want your adaptive sun lenses to be better in low light situations specifically, if you're someone who generally doesn't like wearing sunglasses, for example, if you are less light sensitive and you want as much light to come through as possible while still being protected from the sun, I would recommend to just go all the way with the DuraVision Platinum coating, which would be exactly the same, but would have anti-reflection on the front and the back. Now, none of my pairs are spec that way because I have lots of glasses for lower light situations, but it is something that would make them better in, for example, indoor environments. If you really want these sunglasses to be perfect for that, I would recommend choosing that option. And let's see how these four-year-old adaptive sun lenses still darken with UV. It really is a faultless technology. These have just worked so well for me over the years. And trust me, I've really put them through their paces. I've worn them a lot during that time. You can see now just how dark this lens has gone. But unlike the gray, I still have really good visibility inside, even though this is darkened to the maximum amount. That's the difference between brown and gray. We still have that really good visibility, even with minimal light transmission. And the frame is also my favorite. This is very special to me because it was given to me by the inventor of Recubic Eyes, my favorite brand to recommend to you. And they're my favorite brand to recommend to you because they are the glasses that are the easiest to live with. They are so amazing to wear because they are just effortlessly comfortable. They weigh almost nothing and they're virtually indestructible. You can pretty much do anything to these sunglasses and they're not gonna break. Whilst this is one of a kind, we have replicated it for the customers using a rimless design copying the shape, copying the size, so that is something we can do for you. But this being a one-of-a-kind frame, it just makes them even more special. And that's probably one of the reasons why this is my favorite pair. Now, moving on, if you want the neutral color perception of the gray, combined with the improved contrast of the brown, that's where a green lens is ideal. That's why green was invented as a lens color for military aircraft pilots who needed that accurate color perception, but also needed to see things as sharply as possible. That's what a green lens does. And predictably, I found this to be almost halfway between the gray and the brown. But for me, they never get to that point of unusability that I found with the gray. It's just that in certain low light situations, for example, if I've been out hiking, I get stuck in the dark in a forest, I can still see really well with the brown and the green, maybe not so much. That's partly the lens color, but it's also partly the treatment that's applied to these. They have a diamond flash coating. And that adds that silver effect on the front surface of the lens. Now, just like we said that an anti-reflective coating improves your vision in low light situations, a flash coating improves your vision in bright light situations, even more so than the lenses themselves do, despite how dark they go. And the reason for that is because when you get direct sunlight that's pointing straight at your eyes, the only way you would block that with a tint is by essentially going to a 100% tint. And obviously that's not practical because then you are blind. However, a flash coating achieves that while still letting the ambient light through. So it means that any bright light that's pointing directly at you, for example, if you're cycling into the sun, if you're driving into the sun, even if you're walking into the sun, that direct sunlight will be reflected away from your eyes. So in really strong bright light situations, a flash coating like this is perfect. And that's why I've also found this pair to be the best for driving, because sometimes in some situations you do have that direct sunlight. Another component of that is the fact that these are polarized, and that is an option you can spec with adaptive sun lenses as well. The only caveat is that it has to be the solid tint. So if you go polarized, it's gotta be solid, can't be the gradient. And to be fair, I think that works best with this frame. This is from the JF Ray Leather Collection. They're very quirky sunglasses with a lot of personality, and I love wearing them with the right outfit. When I'm in the right mood, these just really fit, for me, my personality. And here is how the green lens looks when activated with UV. Now, you'll actually notice with this pair that because of the silver flash coating on the front, diamond as it's called, there won't actually be that much difference in the aesthetics of the two, but what should happen is that the silver effect should become more prominent. And by the way, if you want to take the flash coating a step further, you can apply mirrored coatings to all adaptive sun colors. What a mirror coating does is make the front surface fully reflective, which takes it to the next extreme. So it makes them even more protective against direct sunlight, making it ideal for sport in particular. But it does then start to impact on the low light performance. And it does mean that 
if you're, for example, cycling and it gets to kind of dust conditions, whilst you will still be able to see, you won't necessarily be able to see as clearly as if you had any of the other treatment options, whether you had the flash coating like I've got on here, or the anti-reflective or the Duravision Sun. But a mirror is better than all three of those options in extreme conditions. So where I found this pair to be the best in particular is driving, as mentioned, but they've also been excellent for walking, hiking, and they're really, really good on holiday, probably better than the brown on holiday. They don't have that same cooling effect as much as the gray, but not far off either. So for me, I would always go for the green over the gray. And finally, probably the most divisive option of the four is the blue. Now, I have to say that aesthetically, I absolutely adore the blue. I think it looks the most interesting, the most unique, and it has this really refreshing feel when you immediately put them on. And for indoor use, this is probably my number one pair of the four. I love wearing this indoors. I love the relaxing effect that it has on the eyes. Now, the flip side to that is that out in the really bright sun, they're definitely nowhere near as protective as the other three colors because a blue lens does kind of amplify brightness. Having said that, Compared to your average pair of sunglasses off the shelf, these are still gonna be amazing. Don't forget, they will go to a 97% tint. So when I'm saying that, I'm being particularly picky. I'm spoiled with either three. In the sun, they're not bad, but they're also not great. And most people buying these would probably want them primarily as sunglasses. That being said, if you're someone who doesn't go out too much, if you're someone who doesn't like dark sunglasses, and if you're someone who prioritizes the style of the sunglasses over anything else, I would definitely recommend the blue. I finished mine with an amber flash coating, which ties in with the gold detailing on these gassed crystal frames. This is my least expensive pair, but you could argue that they look the most expensive, and that's the magic of gassed. Matteo Gastaldo has created a collection of frames that are super well built, super luxury in the aesthetic, but also super inexpensive as well. That is very difficult to do. Trust me, that is very difficult to do, and not many have achieved it to the level he has, if any brands at all. And in this Wayfarer style frame, I think the blue just pairs beautifully with it. So I find these arguably the best for relaxing at home, for being out shopping, going in and out of shops, and actually surprisingly for walking in some environments. If you're in a green environment, the blue just, it, it changes your perception of what you're seeing, but it enhances it as well, something that I didn't expect. On the flip side, if it's a holiday pair, probably not the option to go with, and certainly not for driving as well. If you drive frequently and your sunglasses are very important to you for driving, I wouldn't select the blue. But with that being said, hopefully you can now identify the pros and cons of each color option, and I really hope this video has helped you to know which of the Adaptive Sun colors is right for you. If you have any questions about Adaptive Sun, please leave them in the comment section below. I love talking about this technology because for me, it's the single biggest upgrade you can probably make to your eyewear wardrobe. Having Adaptive Sun is a game changer because it converts what would be an occasionally used pair to a pair that you can really use every day and love wearing as well. That enhances your vision, that either makes you feel relaxed in the case of the blue, improves your contrast in the case of the green, gives you maximum versatility in the case of the brown, and gives you that cooling, relieving effect in the case of the gray. Which color do you like best? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd really like to know which of these colors is overall the most popular. And if you found this video helpful, please give us a like. Subscribe to the channel for more of the best eyewear content on the internet. This channel is growing really rapidly and I need you to help maintain that. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys, bye bye.